underground now giving tropical paradise at Christmas time. Come visit my island of books. We have peppermint rum and expectations. and welcome back to another video. Today, as the title would suggest, I am making my list and checking it twice. And by checking it twice, I mean I am pre-ordering everything and then I'm telling you about it for fun and accountability purposes. Because you see, next year, my book buying ban will vanish and I will be free to buy anything that I like. Hi, Santa. You know where she's like, oh, in a 54 convertible too, light blue. More like, can I just have a moving truck and an extension added to my house for books? And um, can I have like 14 more hours in each day? And a selection of tea-like beverages. I'm not asking much, just a token, merely a trifle. <laughs> Okay, well, we've definitely lapsed into Leanne's musical, Welcome to the Inside of My Head. What we are actually here today to talk about is my most anticipated books of 2023. And, uh, th there are a lot of them. If it has an ISBN, the order is in. We don't actually have that much time to chat, believe it or not, because there are so many books on this list that this is going to be a whip-crack tour through 2023's publishing year in, in my in my eyes in my interest box so without further ado let's get on with it so i'm going to cover two categories of new releases here today the first is going to be a small list of sequels that i personally am very very excited for and then we are going to talk about brand new releases both standalones and the beginnings of series easy easy easy, easy. i have to the best of my ability put both of these lists into date order as the dates stand right now all know that the publishing calendar does chop and change somewhat throughout the year so take these dates as happy Estimates. Alrighty, let's get started. Coming out on the 5th of January, nice and early to put extra pressure on me to finish that reread. Thanks so much, publishers. Is Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. This is the fifth book in the truly devious series. It follows Stevie Bell as she continues on in her adventures at Ellingham Academy, although she is now in her senior year. And I am led to believe that this one does not take place solely in Ellingham Academy. I think that Stevie is actually going to leave the school. She may be uh, going to study abroad with <coughs> someone. And during that study abroad time, there is a cold case that Stevie gets very interested in, which happened in the 90s. Next up, we have a book that is on pretty much every most anticipated list that I have watched so far this year, and that is, of course, Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo. I read Ninth House with my Patreon book club last month? Was it last month? Ah, uh, what is time? And I really freaking loved it. This series starts off with Alex Stern turning up in the freshman class at Yale. She has an extremely sketchy and mysterious past that she would rather leave in the past, but the catch to getting over all of that and being at Yale is that she monitors all of Yale's secret magical societies. And many things go wrong. Like many, ma many things many things go wrong. The next one on this list might be a little bit of a surprise for you guys because I have not actually yet talked about the first book in this series on my channel. It is The Tyranny of Faith which is the second book in the Empire of the Wolf series by Richard Swan. I was thoroughly influenced by the lovely Tori at Tori Morrow. I will link her channel down below to pick up a few of her favourites that she has absolutely raved about. The Justice of Kings was one of those books which is a essentially a murder mystery set in a fantasy world. It follows Sir Conrad Von Vault, who is the king's justice, as he looks into the death of a noble woman which has been reported to him. And this one has a particularly interesting hook for me because it's not actually told from Conrad's point of view or look from an omniscient narrator's point of view. It's told from Helena's point of view, who is Conrad's clerk. And I've pre-ordered this one for purely vain reasons because the hardbacks are absolutely 
stunning. And so if I love the first one, I don't want to end up having to wait for a paperback and have a not matching set. And this one doesn't come out until the 15th of February, so I've got until February to work out whether I actually want the sequel or not. Although I suspect the answer is not not. I suspect the answer is yes yes. Next up, coming out on the 28th of February, another book that is going to be on every most anticipated list for anybody who loves sci-fi and fantasy is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. This is technically a prequel in the Roots of Chaos series which of course started with the Priory of the Orange Tree. Priory is essentially about a queendom that doesn't have an heir. It has a lot of kick-ass female characters in it, a lot of queerness and a lot of dragons as the covers may suggest. And A Day of Fallen Night follows the ancestors of the characters in Priory of the Orange Tree back through the ages as we get some of the epic stories that has already been hinted at in the lore of Priory. It all sounds very confusing but I promise it will make sense. We are Samantha Shannon stands on this channel. I have become absolutely obsessed with her work in 2022 so I cannot wait to add the hardback of this beauty to my shelves. Next up on March 7th, so missing my birthday by a couple of days, we have the second in the Magic of the Lost series by C.L. Clark. I did not think that we could live up to the magic of the cover of the Unbroken but uh, we think we have surpassed ourselves. This series follows Terrain who is a soldier who has been sent back to her homeland to stop a rebellion and Luca. Luca's job is to sway the rebels towards peace, it's to follow orders. But what Luca is looking for isn't really peace, it's actually a turncoat. I will never ever get over the feeling that washed over me when I read the bottom of the blurb on the first book. I have found it for you just so that I can give you the same experience. It says, through assassinations and massacres in bedrooms and war rooms, Terrain and Luca will haggle over the price of a nation. But some things aren't for sale. Next up, coming out on the 3rd of August is the reissue of Ravensong, the second book in TJ Clune's Green Creek series. Because of TJ Clune's pretty epic success, Tor has picked up his backlist and is slowly releasing him. So Ravensong comes on the back of Wolf Song, which looks like this. And you better bet that your bitch here ended up tracking down a copy of the Sprayed Edges version of Wolf Song because <laughs> Just a note for anybody who can access Waterstones, they are producing all of TJ Clune's books with these like wrap round sprayed edges. Apparently the cats are as excited about them as I am. <laughs> Next up coming out on the 8th of August we have got The Shadow Cabinet which is the follow up to Juno Dawson's Her Majesty's Royal Coven. Just finished the first book today and I need answers. There are conclusions which were not drawn. Her Majesty's Royal Coven is about a group of childhood friends who also happen to be witches. A coven of witches that are there to protect the crown and the country from evil forces. But in the first book they are not exactly the best of friends. I need the second book and August is too long away to wait. And then talking about books which we have had to wait a long time for, coming out on the 12th of October, finally, is Silverborn, the fourth book in the Trials of Morgan Crow series by Jessica Townsend. This is a magical middle grade series about a girl called Morgan Crow who is destined to die on her 11th birthday when at the last tick of the clock someone swoops in to take her away. This is a pretty beloved series anybody who likes middle grade is going to have this one on their list this year. I don't read a tremendous amount of middle grade these days and yet it is here on my list. Okay, so that is all of my most anticipated sequels for 2023. If you think I have missed something, then do your girl a solid and tell me down in the comments below. There is always a chance that a beloved author of mine is bringing out a sequel to a series and I have somehow missed it. While you do that, I shall continue on to the new releases of 2023. So first up coming out on the 17th of January is a book from an author that I said I was never going to read again. Because this book is of course How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. So after the final girls support group I was like nope no more I'm not doing it again and then he announces a haunted house book so I'm doing it again. The only other thing that I'm a little bit worried about with this one is that the blurb does mention the pepperoni. So basically it says that after the pepperoni, the two main characters who are a brother and sister have lost both of their parents. And now that it's over, 
they are facing what a lot of people are which is that they have no money and the only thing that they have which is of any value at all is their childhood home except that when they get there they discover that their parents have covered all of the mirrors and the windows to the house in newspaper and the whole place is in complete darkness so yeah I guess I'll let you guys know. Next up coming out on the 19th of January is one that I am very unreservedly excited for and that is The Strange Case of the Alperton Angels by Janice Hallett. Janice Hallett of course wrote both The Appeal and The Twyford Code which are standalone mystery thrillers but the hook with Janice Hallett mysteries is that everyone is written very experimentally. At the start you open a safe deposit box and in this safe deposit box is all of the research material for a true crime book which was never finished or published. This true crime book focused on the Alperton Angels who were a cult-like group who believed that one of their members had mistakenly given birth to the Antichrist. That baby's mother and that baby disappeared into the care system and now all of these years later you are unearthing what happened to this baby from the point of view of an author who wants to get the scoop on where this baby has gone before her rival true crime author publishes the manuscripts. I think that it has the potential to once again be a hell of a good time especially if the contents of that safe deposit box includes a variety of different types of written material like interviews and transcripts and stuff because that for me was what made the appeal so interesting. Next up on the 19th of January another very popular one that I have seen on a lot of people's new releases list for 2023 is God Killer by Hannah Kainor. This is the first in a new fantasy series Series also called the God Killer series and it follows Kissin who as you might have guessed it kills gods for a living. She enjoys it, it is a job that she is particularly good at but one day she is sent to kill a god and realises that she can't do it, something which has never happened to her before. The god that she has been sent to kill is the god of white lies and it is connected to a little girl who is on the run who turns out to be a noble girl. There is also another character in this called Elagast who works for the king. He has fought in the god war, he has rid his city of as many shrines as physically possible when his king sends him an odd message and asks him to rush back into the city that he has just destroyed. Next up coming on the 2nd of February we have got Wayward by Amelia Hart, a book that I am already salty about even though I don't have it yet because this is the UK cover and this is the US cover. Are we seeing a slight bit of difference between the two? This is a witchy historical fiction novel which follows three generations of a witchy family and I am very confused as to why we have butterflies and electric blue but hey ho here we are. <laughs> So this one follows three women over five centuries beginning with Kate in 2019 and she runs away to Crow's Beck where there is a cottage in this tiny tiny little village of Crow's Beck which once belonged to her extremely eccentric great aunt Violet who was an entomologist and in case you were not also obsessed with early CSI then entomology is the study of bugs. You're welcome. And as Kate works through the traumas of what has just happened to her and the traumas of her past that she has has never ever dealt with. She starts to delve into this cottage and she finds some things which connect her to her great aunt Violet and to several women throughout the ages. Guys, so we're only at number five on my list of 24 new releases and my battery has already given up the ghost. Can help. Okay so next up on the list coming out on February 7th is Spite House by Johnny Compton. This is a standalone horror that I am very very excited for. It follows one of my favourite formats ever. The format that I guess I will call The Shining format. Because while I didn't like The Shining very much, I did love the format of a family going to look after this big empty hotel in the middle of nowhere all alone and that is exactly what this one does. Something super Natural is following Eric Ross and his family around and he cannot shake it. Then one day he comes across a very strange ad to be a caretaker for the Masson House in Texas. This property is known for being the most haunted in all of Texas and essentially what the people who own it want is for somebody to go live there, maintain the property and also to record 
all of these supernatural goings on in the house. But apart from the huge cash payout at the end of this which could change Eric and his children's lives forever, Eric hopes that by staying in spite of house there is a chance that he will be able to finally start to understand the supernatural and to maybe finally get an answer to what is driving them from town to town. On the 9th of February we have got The Heroines by Laura Shepperson. This one is a Greek myth retelling, the first of a couple that I've got my eye on this year. This retelling focuses on Phaedra who is the sister of Ariadne and it focuses on a trial. On one hand we have got Phaedra who as the blurb says is a foreign queen, the daughter of an adulteress, the sister of a monster and on the other side we have got Theseus. But the blurb on this one says a scandalous accusation has ruptured the royal family in Athens. The king's son stands accused of rape. Next up on the 28th of February we have got an extremely creepy looking horror that I am very excited for because it involves insects. This is She is a Haunting by Trang Tan Tran. Can we just take a moment for the cover? It's doing the most and I am buying all of it. So this one is about Jade Nugent. She is a wannabe college student and I say wannabe because she does not have the money yet to go to college. And in order to get the cash, Jade heads home to Vietnam to visit her estranged father. If she can just pretend to be straight enough and American enough and Vietnamese enough then there's a chance that she can get through this entire visit and she can leave with the money that she needs which is all that she really wants. But the house that Jade is staying in is a French colonial house that her father is slowly renovating and as soon as Jade turns up the house turns against her. The next three books on my list all come out on the 2nd of March. Apparently the 2nd of March is a book bonanza publishing day. We have some high seas drama, some piracy adventures from S.A. Chakraborty who is of course the author of the City of Brass series. S.A. Chakraborty is bringing to us the adventures of Amina Al Sarafi, a pirate who has retired. Amina El Sarafi was the scourge of the Indian Ocean. She was known for being vicious, for being fierce and for getting some of the best bounties that any pirate ever has. Theoretically she should be content in her retirement but remember what I said about life coming and knocking on your door? In this case it was less life and more the mother of one of her former crewmates. This woman is very wealthy but she's also very scared and she tells Amina that Amina's former crewmate's daughter has been kidnapped, so I suppose her granddaughter? Anyway, said mysterious girl has been kidnapped and this woman would like Amina to go and track her down. It isn't just one more job, it's a job that could not only set her family up, but could set her children's children's family up for the rest of their lives. The next one also coming out on March the 2nd is a bit of a weird one. It's kind of a mystery, it's kind of literary fiction, it's kind of a thriller. However, this one has my attention because it is written by Eleanor Catton who is also the author of The Luminaries. The Luminaries was published in 2013 and Eleanor Catton hasn't published anything since, so as soon as I spotted this I was intrigued. This one is about Mira Bunting. She has formed a guerrilla gardening group. The problem is to keep this group going takes quite a lot of money and they are barely breaking even with their crops that they sell from all of these little places. So when Mira finds out about the town of Thorndyke which has been cut off by a natural landslide it's like a gift that's been given to the group. In this town there is a farm which is of course already all set up for them to plant things in and is completely abandoned. But just as Mira is about to move her group into this farm she discovers that it has been snapped up by an American billionaire who wants to essentially make it his end of days bunker. And the last one for the 2nd of March is a straight up thriller that oh, as soon as I saw the cover I was like I need it, I need it right now, I need it in my sticky hands, can somebody, can somebody just put me in touch with somebody who can give me it right now? This is The Writing Retreat by Julie Benz. It is about Alex. She has been working her entire life to try and write something of merit and yet she has never managed to finish anything. But when she is given the once in a lifetime chance to go to a writing retreat 
which at the end of it has the prize of a seven figure writing contract. She absolutely jumps at it, she drops everything in her life and she goes. But as time goes on and everybody starts to get more and more desperate to finish their novel and to get this contract, mind games start to happen. And Alex realises that there may only be one way out of this writing retreat and it's not by writing a novel. I am so excited. I love books about authors. The only thing that could have possibly made this any better is if the writing retreat was haunted. And just once again proving that March is the best month in the world, on March 8th we get Clytemnestra's Bind. So at the beginning of this one Clytemnestra is a queen and her palace is invaded by Agamemnon who of course is a rival for the throne. He kills her entire family, he slaughters everybody and he takes her as his bride. And as with many other Greek myth retellings there are a ton of trigger warnings for this one because he does force her to produce heirs to the throne. But I think that is where this story actually picks up and where the bulk of the focus is. Because the blurb seems to suggest that this book is not actually about everything that happened to Clytemnestra when Agamemnon took over the palace, but actually about her life now. Now that she has had these children, when she has created another family that she is desperate to try and keep intact, when Agamemnon sets his sights on Troy and threatens not only the stability of the actual kingdom, but also the stability of this family that she is painstakingly woven together from her blood, sweat and tears. And finally, on the 28th of March, T. Kingfisher is once again gracing us with another haunted house story. I'm so grateful. I'm just so grateful. You guys know that I have absolutely fallen in love with T. Kingfisher. Problem with that is she's a machine. She's just producing books like left and right. There are in fact two on this list. One in March and one later on in the year in two completely different genres. I don't... Her brain... Look, I just... I love her, okay? It's a fan club of me and, and only me. And again, it's another one of those where I'm kind of like, well, the UK one looks like this and it's fine, you know? It's fine. But the US one looks like this. I'm just like, why? Why is this happening? Why? So The House With Good Bones is about Samantha who has driven home to her family home for a visit and when she gets there, when she pulls into the driveway, there is a massive black vulture that is sitting on the mailbox just staring at her and when she gets into the house, her shock just continues. The blows just keep coming because her entire family house has changed. Instead of the like warm, weird, eclectic style that her mum had of furnishing the place, all of the walls are sterile white. And the longer Sam stays, the creepier things get. And also, the vulture, it doesn't go away. It, it, it circles. It just stays in circles. So there's a creepy bird and a creepy house. <laughs> D. Kingfisher might as well just, you know, uh, give me a direct debit form so that she can just take money from my bank account whenever she comes up with a new book because uh, I will buy it. Coming on the 4th of April is a sci-fi that oh, sounds like everything I ever wanted in a sci-fi horror. This is The Scourge Between Stars by Ness Brown and it's about Captain Jacqueline Albright. She finds herself in the not enviable position of having to bring back what remains of this failed colony which left Earth years and years ago. Everyone is ill or starving or in some state of bodily disrepair. The starship Calypso itself is not in the best state either. It is fair to say that it is limping back to Earth and she is doing everything to keep ship and crew together and alive by the time that they get there. Because while they are locked in this spaceship in the middle of deep space, people start to die. But they're not dying from illness and starvation. They are being picked off one by one in a very bloody fashion. And now on the 6th of April, another author who has two different releases on this list. Olive Blake is of course the author of The Atlas Six and under another pen name she has actually brought out 
a rom-com as well. So, you know, like T. Kingfisher, your girl's kind of a machine. And although this one on the surface from the cover certainly does not look like something that I would typically pick up, you might then be like, ah, I get it. I see the appeal. When I tell you that the rival families, the rival mob families in this book are rival witch families. On the one side we have the Anatova sisters. They are cunning, ruthless and mysterious and they serve their mother who is the supplier of premium intoxicants in their area and she is known only as Baba Yaga. And on the other side we have the Federov brothers who serve their father who specialises in extortion. And all of this takes place in a weird, slightly screwed, slightly fantastical version of Manhattan. The blurb says that after 12 years of living in a stalemate of the kind of let's see who steps their toe over the line first shall we, an outside disaster comes to rock both families and suddenly everybody needs to pick a side but the sides are not quite as linear as they used to be. Next on the 13th of April we have got the next offering from Jennifer Saint who is of course the author of Ariadne and Electra. This time she is taking a beautiful orange swing at the myth of Atalanta and <sighs> when I tell you that I rubbed my hands together in glee. So essentially this one is the story of Atalanta who is born as the daughter of the king of Arcadia but when she is born she is just a girl. She is a huge huge disappointment and the king doesn't want anything to do with her so she is literally just abandoned on a mountainside and left to die. She is then found by a mother bear who raises Atalanta as part of her group of cubs under the keen eye of the goddess Artemis. We do love our girl Artemis. But as Atalanta grows up she is determined to prove that she belongs among the heroes and heroines of her world. She decides that it is in fact her birthright to be there and so she journeys to find Jason and become one of his Argonauts. Then on the 24th of April I could almost cry. I'm so excited for this book. This is In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Clune and it is a found family about androids and robots. <laughs> Little Leanne grew up loving Star Trek The Next Generation and being fascinated by Data and so there's a little part of current Leanne that's still Little Leanne that still just wants the androids to be happy together. Can I just, can I just read you, can I just read you the start of this blurb guys? It <laughs> In a strange little home built into the branches of a grove of trees live three robots. Fatherly inventor android Giovanni Lawson a pleasantly sadistic nurse machine and a small vacuum desperate for love and attention. Victor Lawson, a human, lives there too. They're a family hidden and safe. And let me tell you, whoever arrives to make them not hidden and safe, they're gonna have to answer to me. Next up on May 11th, we have this stunning, stunning, Stunning book. This is The Lake House by Sarah Beth Hurst. Now this is clearly a horror but I am having trouble finding out whether this is an adult horror with teenage protagonists or whether this is a YA horror. And to be honest I don't really care which of those it is because it looks like this. So this one simply says that the main protagonist Claire has grown up doing a lot of repetitive behaviour. So it sounds like she's living with OCD and she as far as she's concerned has got everything under control. All of these scenarios running in the background are keeping everything that she cares about alive and safe. But then she is sent to a summer camp and she's already extremely nervous about this because it is an unknown environment. But when she turns up there as a late arrival she finds the worst possible case scenario has already happened. There is a blackened, burnt out summer camp. It is just a hollow of a place and in the woods there are dead bodies. And another one down and another one down and another battery bites the dust. Hey, we're gonna get this done but the batteries keep biting the dust. So finally on the 30th of May is a really really interesting one because this is a start of a new fantasy series by Martha Wells. This one is Witch King. I, like probably most of you, know Martha Wells from the Murderbot Diaries books and I did not realise that prior to these books Books, Martha Wells had actually written a fantasy series. There is a trilogy out there. So you know who's back Leslie Ann's gonna be diving into next year. Witch King sounds 
absolutely amazing. At the start of the blurb, there's a tiny bit of dialogue between the two characters that I'm just going to read for you because it made me laugh. So it says, I didn't know you were a demon. And the other character responds, you idiot. I'm the demon. <laughs> giving me like Angel and Buffy vibes. So this is about Kai. He is a demon and he has been murdered. And once he has been murdered, his body goes into a kind of coma. It's like his consciousness is completely turned off. He isn't aware of anything, but his physical body is stuck in a trap. Years and years pass and then Kai wakes up to find what the book describes as a lesser mage who's trying to free Kai and harness his power for themselves. Oh my god, I'm on the last page of the last book. <laughs> so next up, on the 20th of July, we have my absolute beloved, my one true thriller love, Lisa Jewell. She is bringing out a new book called None of This Is True, and I cannot wait for a palette cleanser after the sequel to The Family Upstairs. So None of This Is True is about two women who end up in the same restaurant on the same day celebrating their birthdays. They are like, wow, that's amazing, we're birthday twins. They strike up a conversation about it and then they discover that not only are they actually really honestly birthday twins, like they were born on the same day, but they were actually born in the same hospital. One of these women, Alex, is a podcaster and a journalist and she's like, that would make a really cool story. The fact that both of our lives have like intersected and passed by each other multiple times and we didn't know. Could we maybe start interviewing about this? And Josie agrees. Josie thinks that this is a great idea. But as time goes on, the more interviews that Alex does, the more tapes that Alex gets from Josie, the more she realises that Josie has been hiding some really horrible, really dark secrets. And before Alex knows it, Josie and her life are inextricably linked. I do have faith in her. I do have faith. One bad book does not a bad author experience make. So again, with the crossed fingers. <laughs> Then on the 1st of August we have the other book from T. Kingfisher that we are getting next year. And this one is a fairy tale retelling, very much like Nettle and Bone was a fairy tale retelling. So this one is essentially the retelling of the myth of Sleeping Beauty and also kind of the retelling of Maleficent, sort of, bear with me. So there is a princess, she is asleep, she is in a tower, she is behind thorns, but this is not about that princess. This is about about Toadling. Toadling was stolen from her parents on the day that she was born by fairies and she was taken away to the fairy realm but she grew up very happily there. She didn't have a problem at all. She loved her like fairy godmothers. However, when Toadling comes of age, her fairy godmothers ask her to go back to the human realm to give a blessing to a newborn child. Are we getting Maleficent vibes yet? Then years and years later after this blessing <coughs> curse has happened, a knight rides up to this thorny hedge and he decides that he is going to see if there really is a princess in a tower like all the rumours say. There is a curse, he is going to be the one to break it. But Toadling is still there and she is desperate against all odds to be the one to keep the curse intact. Then next up on the 3rd of August we have got the second Olivia Blake book that we will be getting next year. However, your girl has a very eclectic reading taste. You know, I, I read many things from many places and it is very much up my street but I'm going to be very amused to see what Olivia Blake fans do with this one. This is about Viola who is an estate agent but she is also a vampire. That doesn't really stop her when it comes to selling houses. The thing that is stopping her however about selling this freaking house is that it's haunted. It has poltergeist activity in it and it is scaring away every customer that she gets within an inch of it. So she requires some help and she goes to Fox. Fox is a medium. In fact, Fox is the godson of death himself. And she would quite like his help, thank you very much, to get rid of the ghosty. However, as soon as the two meet, they are given a quest. And it's a quest that neither of them want. And it is a quest that is not exactly going to make them best friends. And ironically, the blurb then has a very T. Kingfisher vibe because it goes on to say, 
but with the help of an unruly poltergeist, a demonic personal trainer, a sharp-voiced angel, a love-stricken reaper and a few mindfulness-practicing creatures, Vi and Fox soon discover the difference between a mysterious love lost and an annoying dead body isn't nearly as distinct as they thought. Okay, third from the end of my list on the 19th of September, we have got a horror that is described for fans of Stranger Things. Remember what I said about that 80s horror Stranger Things vibe just creeping in everywhere? This one is All Hallows by Christopher Golden. It is set in 1984 on Halloween night and on that night there are two families at the either end of this street who are both in crisis and in the meantime outside on the street four children whose costumes look a bit old whose makeup looks a bit streaky and faded and who are all terrified they blend in with the kids who are trick-or-treating and they ask them please can you save them please can you keep them safe from the cunning man and it was there my friends that i stopped reading the blurb and i pressed the pre-order button and i was like don't care who the cunning man is, want it. Now, coming on the 12th of October, we have got the second offering from Rebecca Netley. I just recently read The Whistling by Rebecca Netley and was completely blown away by it. And this one, her new one, is called The Black Feathers and it just straight up has ghosts in it. It is about Annie who has married a widower called Edward and has moved into his beautiful mansion on the Yorkshire Moors. She thinks that by marrying Edward she has put all of her past behind her but when she gets to Edward's home on the Moors she discovers that Edward's sister Iris still lives there. She tells Annie that she needs to be on the lookout for black feathers and she needs to stay away from them because they mark the spots where spirits have visited and she completely ignores her but then a series of weird things happens and she can no longer put it off. She has to find out what is actually happening in this house. Please don't let this be a mess, okay? okay? And then finally, my last book on the list and the book that doesn't have an actual release date yet, it is just going to be fall of 2023. We have got the most recent book by Ava Reed. So this book is a study in drowning and it is actually a dark academia. This one is about Effie. She wins an architecture contest to build for her favourite author a family mansion. But what she had in her mind winning this competition and what she actually gets are two completely different things. Because Effie finds herself on the grounds of a estate which is absolutely falling down around her ears in the middle of absolute nowhere. And it is there that she needs to rely on a rival student, somebody who did not win the contest, to try and work out what is going on. Because as soon as Effie gets there, she gets embroiled in a decades old, dark and twisted mystery that is pulling her in inexorably day by day. That is it guys. Those are all of my most anticipated for 2023 as of right now. As always, if you are looking forward to any of the books on this list, then please tell me about it down below. If you are new here, then please consider sticking around to see what I think about some of these books in 2023. There are a lot of videos for you to watch in the meantime. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that thumbs up because it really does help my channel. If you've got all the way to the end of this video, then please leave me the stack of books emoji because that is clearly the vibe that we are going for right here and i will speak to all of you very soon guys bye